So let's go ahead and create this cool water tower. And thank you so much for being a Patreon. And let's get started with the creative process, which is heavily non-destructive. So I've been using non-destructive modifiers for quite a while actually for generating architectural designs within Blender. But I also did watch one video by Alex Pai a while ago, maybe even a year ago, that was showing how to use the deform modifier quite a bit. So in here you can see quite a few iterations of the deform modifier to kind of start with this initial shape and then deform it in many different ways and keep the whole thing completely non-destructive. Yeah, you can do a similar thing with lattice modifier, for example, but with the deform modifier, you actually, because sometimes it does something that you're not 100% used to or didn't expect that kind of result. And, and discover is always something quite interesting within architecture. As you can see, the modeling process is actually fairly quick. And then we spent quite a bit of time on adjusting the environment because for this kind of tower, I didn't want to go too crazy with the environment and spend a lot of time because I don't know if you've noticed, but in a lot of my videos, I spent significant amount of time with the environment because our project is only one small part that we see in a bigger picture. And that takes a lot of time. On Instagram, I think there's, there's this one guy, one Russian Instagrammer who posts these beautiful architectural visualizations and they're all on water or on cliffs. And I understand why now, because they are quite simple to do and fairly straightforward and they still look really good. Even though we don't have that many instances where we have so many water towers that are just sitting in the water or buildings for that matter. So you can see here with the deform modifier, sometimes I don't even know what kind of result that will get. So it takes a little bit of tweaking to get something that kind of looks good and deforms it in a way that I would like it to deform. In this case, sort of stretch it in one direction and expand it in the opposite direction. And what I did also is actually duplicate the whole geometry once more and adjust some of the initial deformation modifiers. So we have almost like a, a net of, of two objects that are coming together. So spiral stairs, another favorite topic of mine, including towers and water, and they are fairly simple. So they're again, all non-destructive, modifier based, and we start with a very simple section that's then mirrored in two. And it can be as simple or as complex as we want. Initially, I start just with the step and an area for the railing, then do an array modifier in the correct direction and just make it a stairway to heaven in this case. And then all we need to do is use a circle object to curve it on. And later, when we want, we can go and modify the stair as much as we want and create more detail with the railing and I start adding some materials. Now, once we understand where the top of the building is, I do have a sort of a baked version of the geometry sitting in there somewhere that I'm using to kind of intersect that top floor with our stair, with our geometry. So it doesn't go outside of it too much. And then we create a hole in there for our stair and then a landing for the stair as well. So it just looks nice that that stair is actually going to somewhere, right? It's not just a stairway to nowhere, but it's a stairway to a destination. In this case, a beautiful destination in this kind of island place where you need to go with your boat and go up and have a really beautiful view. So actually what took the longest in this process, even longer than generating the model was getting the right HDRI, and I always have this problem with HDRIs actually, is getting the right look and the right view and the right sun. So in this case, it took a lot of experimenting. And in the end, you will see that I actually set up with the one that I started out with, which is this one. And it's from HDRI Haven. Also in this case, I didn't want to do too much post-processing outside of Blender. It's a very quick project. So I set up compositing within Blender itself as much as I could. And because it is an island, we need a boat. Uh, this boat comes from Evermotion and I needed to adjust the materials quite a bit to get it to look right. So that took a bit of time, but it's all right because I think it looks good. I opted for a sailboat uh, because of the long element. So it's comparable to the tower. Uh, the person comes in from Humanity 3D. I think it's one of the free samples that I've used. A really nice guy, really nice fella again, an OBJ that I needed to convert to Blender including the materials. And from this point on, it's further refinements really. So looking at the top and 
adding a guardrail. Adjusting the materials, adding a bit of thickness to that. Starting to play a little bit with the materials as well. In this case, I'm using material lick materials. It's an add-on. The link is actually in the description in the video below. From all the add-ons that I've used and I bought in material packs, the material lick one seems to work the best for me because I need to do the least amount of work onto it. And that's good because otherwise it takes quite a bit of time to tweak the materials to make them look good in larger architectural scenes. So like I was mentioning before, the boat requires quite a bit of adjustments to some of the materials to make it look right. And then once we're satisfied with the additional modeling steps here, it's time to start tweaking the environment again. And you can see I'm trying a series of different HDRIs. And then I also tried the atmosphere add-on, which is great, but what I don't like about it is that there's no clouds. If, there, if the atmosphere add-on could somehow introduce clouds, then probably I would stop using HDRIs and spending so much time on setting up the scenes. In the end, I opted to use one of the first HDRIs, but in the process, what was quite nice is also to add some lights. I also have Blender Girls Pro Lighting Pack with HDRIs, but to be honest, the good thing about that is that it's very quick, it's integrated with Blender, I just do a single click, but the quality of the actual HDRIs is not that good. And they don't have a ground, uh, which is in many cases quite useful to not have that bottom bit, so we get like dark reflections. But in this case, we actually need the bottom to be reflective as well. It does have a series of advanced settings, to get it to look right, but somehow the dynamic range, maybe it was just me and my capability with the tools that I have available, to, but I couldn't get a good dynamic range that I was happy with. However, in the process, I thought that this is looking quite good in EV itself. Also, the water is looking good. When we have light that's coming from the back, it looks quite good. And as I was mentioning earlier, we're adding a few lights in there as well. So next, I'm adding a little bit of detail to the stair and those extra rails to go all the way up, they're going to be illuminated as well. So they'll be glowing, so we have a bit more dynamicism coming from the tower. The material for that is a simple emission material. We just have to play a little bit with the intensity to see what looks good with our view. Now, curious to think... Now, curious to see what you think about this iteration of the image. I thought it turned out quite well, uh, but it still wasn't quite exactly what I wanted to. So yeah, like I was mentioning, we're back to square one, almost. A few more HDRIs to try out, water ones, all coming from HDRI Haven. And again, a few of them just didn't look quite right for the scene. I guess that's important when you don't have anything in your scene except an HDRI. You then definitely have to have an HDRI that passes. You then definitely have to have an HDRI that kind of feels right for the, for the object, for the project, for the environment. Because it is the environment. There is no other environment in this case, right? We have our water. So maybe that's why it's taking actually a bit longer now that I'm thinking about it. Usually I'll be spending three times as much time modeling some sort of environment. But here there is no environment, so our environment is our HDRI, and that does require a bit of time. So in these steps here, I've realized that the material is quite dark with the scene, because I'm using the intensity of the background, it's quite low. To get it to look right, and yeah, again, I'm really happy with the way that this is looking in Eevee as well. Okay, so, finally happy with the scene, with the environment, it's good to go. Just a few more tweaks in the compositor within Blender. Usually I would take this into Affinity Photo to post-process a bit more. And in fact, I haven't tried it with this image yet. Maybe I will export a high-res version just to see what we can come up with, for what kind of look we can get and achieve. And now, as you can see, it is quite a dynamic image in the sense that the sky is still quite bright, which makes the object, even though it has a quite a dark light, seem not so light. So this is the end of this video and 
happy to hear what you think about these narrated videos and whether I should do more. I want to post a lot of time lapses. I've gotten a little bit better at video editing lately, so I'm going back to the archives and there's so much things there that need to be shown. Maybe narrated. So thanks and see you soon.